I think we need to get oil in our lamps every single second that we can. Amen? Amen. God is coming back, and He's coming back for people who know how to worship Him and who know how to love Him. Amen? So let's not sit down on His Word. Tonight. Right. Amen? Amen? In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1, Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life. And that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee and that ye may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers had promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Yes. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Yes, right. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Yes. And these yes. words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, right. yes. and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, right. and they shall be as faultlets between thine eyes. Yes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates, and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers to Abraham, yes. Yes. to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities. Which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, and vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not. I'm telling you what, God has got some good things in store for his people. Amen. Amen. And thou shalt have eaten and be full. Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. From the house of bondage. Amen. Let's pray, Lord. We thank you, God, for the anointing that you already have on your service tonight. We pray, God, there is nothing more powerful than the Word of God, more anointed than the Word of God. It is the Word that brings life into souls that have no life. We thank you tonight, God, for your Word. And we ask it for your blessing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I have been asked to teach tonight, so teach is what I will do, and I will be obedient to what you have asked. The title of the, of the, of the teaching will be, I will serve the Lord, and I, the, we will have a strong emphasis on the Word of God. I believe in the Word of God. There is a similar journey that the nation of Israel will take, and has taken, that many of us will take in our lives. It is a journey. Where God will lead us out of a land that held us in bondage into a new land that he has gone to prepare for us. Amen? Amen. And Moses, not knowing how God was going to deliver his people, was told to wait and to listen and not to act hastily. But right. to wait for the word of the Lord to lead his people into the promised land. Amen? Amen. One of the toughest things for us to do as people who have faith in God is to settle ourselves down and listen and seek his word. There is nothing more powerful than the word of God. When you get into the word, it answers questions that the, our spirit has, that our soul needs desperately answered. But that only comes... From the word of God mixed with faith. Amen. Right. I tell you, there's nothing like a servant when you go in and you hear the word of God and you needed it. And you, by the time you walked in, you know that God was in the midst of that service. And what you had a need of in your life, God can answer. And he can do it just by the preaching of the word of God. Amen. Yeah. Have that happen? Yeah. I can remember many times walking in, especially as a new convert. How God would use his word just to turn things over in my life and bring me into a closer relationship with him. I like what Jesus said in John 14 verses 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. 
Right. In my father's house are many mansions. Right. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And then he says, I go to prepare a place for you. Right. Right. When I read that, it brings such a comfort because, you know, there's torment in this world. But just to know that I serve a God that is going to prepare a place for me. Doesn't it make you want to shout? Say, hallelujah, thank God. Consistently, constantly bringing the nation back to where they were cognizant of God's delivering hand. He wanted them to know as a nation, their obedience to the word needed to be based on spiritual principles, right. not just personal opinions. And yeah. he encouraged by the right motives. Yeah. Only after Moses had laid the strong foundation did he apply God's commands to specific areas in Israel's life. Right. In other words, when God begins to do a work for you in your life, not only does He have to prepare you where you're at right now, but He has to prepare you for where you're going. You see, God was going to bring a nation who did not know about the good things. They didn't taste the manna. They didn't know how to act when they got into the good land. So God has to teach them. He had to teach them how to walk by faith. And how times when God's dealing with us about walking by faith, it's not the easiest thing in the world. But He has gone to prepare a place for us. It's going to be worth it when we see Jesus. Amen? All the things that we go through down here, it's going to be worth it. We serve a mighty and an awesome God in His name. who were 
were spiritually minded and they were devoted to the Lord in their hearts. They saw God's righteous law as not a heavy yoke, but as honey, sweet to the taste. They saw it as light, as a treasure, as freedom, as a source of great joy. I'll tell you, there's been times when I've been depressed, but when I've been in the presence of Almighty God and I get to hear the word, there's a joy that breaks out in my 